Dominator. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lowest Common Dominator, the only show that sifts through the oil spill of pop culture, plucks out the grossest bits, and cleans them off to reveal a majestic, uh, I don't know, like a duck or something. Elk! God, those are pretty animals. Anyway, I'm your host and sludge wiper, Soren Bowie, and I've worn this suit for more pretend events than real ones. At this point, I'm barely a real person. Grease the wheel! <laughs> This, of course, is the Wheel of Low Culture, and if we give it a quick spin, we'll find that the oily topic I'll be bathing today is... Come on, no Grammys, no Grammys, no Grammys. Pop science! Oh, actually, that's perfect. It fits nicely with my seat choice for today. Now, you may have noticed that instead of sitting on something logical, I've chosen this precarious sack of air, and that's because science told me to. Sorry. Pop science told me to. Sites like Pop Sugar, Runner's World, HuffPo, and whole piles of other pseudo-credible websites feature a slew of studies proving the benefits of trading in your spine-ruining office chair for an exercise ball. Science, it seemed, had definitive proof that everything wrong in our lives, from headaches and depression all the way to cancer, was because of the fault in our chars. Which would have been groundbreaking news if there were literally any true science to back it up. Instead, the actual studies about substituting exercise balls for real furniture were like this one from 2009 that said that sitting on a ball for long periods of time contributed to the same terrible posture as a desk chair. Or this study that said that sitting on a ball every day will actually compact your spine, causing more back pain than a chair. And while none of them came anywhere close to a consensus on their ability to stop headaches or cure cancer, the general conclusion of each report boiled down to uh, probably won't kill you. But that's when every science blog or magazine collectively whispered, ah, I get you. Say no more. Wink. And that's generally how all pop science is born. Sites like I f***ing love science, psychology today, and even popular science are all operating with the understanding that we're idiots. And that if science doesn't look like a CSI montage that ends in a big revelation, then we won't pay attention. And the worst part is, they're right. Evidence! <laughs> Maybe you remember this story from I f***ing love science about how researchers finally figured out what the perfect penis looks like. That was seen by millions and shared 48,000 times, presumably because no one read to the last sentence which overtly says, overall, when trying to figure out what makes a perfect penis, researchers found that there was no single penile aspect that is essential. You know, that thing the title literally promised. Or maybe you remember this recent story about how dogs actually understand everything that you say. It bled all the way into NPR and the Washington Post, confirming something that we've all wanted to believe our whole lives, that dogs are secretly hairy mute people who just quietly get it. But the study that created all that attention doesn't say anything close to that. A university in Hungary collected 13 dogs well-trained enough that they'd patiently sit in an MRI machine for up to an hour, which, by the way, should have been the headline, right? What great goddamn dogs! Then the dogs listened to words in different cadences and the researchers documented the increase in oxygen flow to different parts of their brain. And they found that the words of praise pushed a bunch of extra blood into the left hemisphere, which is the part we think is responsible for language comprehension. Words unassociated with praise didn't trigger anything, regardless of the kind of voice the speaker used. And that's it. So the study really only showed that these well-trained dogs heard words like well done and that's it so frequently that they recognized them. But that didn't stop every single science blog from climbing over one another to say, dude, your dog f***ing gets you. See, everything you read on science blogs is more like the based on a true story version of science. They are only beholden to the truth as long as the truth is interesting. Beyond that, they have no moral compunction about telling you that science says dogs have perfect dicks or whatever. What's worse, that impulsive, short attention span part of each of us doesn't even care if it's true, as long as the story is good. And we prove it with every share and every Facebook post that allow this pop science to go viral. Now here's why it matters. It's hard to remember today, but it wasn't that long ago that science was deeply uncool. Every scientist depicted in every medium of our culture was an eccentric nerd that no one could possibly relate to. Rick Moranis in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Peter Parker in Spider-Man, Ross from Friends, Doc in Back to the Future, those kids from Weird Science. Even the Ninja Turtles were beeping ruthless to Donatello, even though he built all the stuff that sent Shredder to Dimension X in the first place. As far as culture was concerned, Dorks did science. But thanks to the internet and sites like I f***ing love science, it's suddenly not only acceptable, but cool to express a scientific curiosity. Scientists in movies today are the booze-guzzling, naked, dancing Oscar Isaacs of Ex Machina. Things change primarily because pop science convinced even the dumbest people that knowing the laws that govern the universe 
could be cool. And there are tangible effects to this. That drought in science's popularity throughout my and presumably your childhood meant that the fields of math, technology, and engineering are starved for young scientists now. The generations who grew up thinking it was for nerds produced record low numbers of people in the field because, you know, we were all trying to get our bands signed. But now you can actually see a momentum shift. According to a survey published by Forbes that asked American kids under 11 what they wanted to be when they grew up, 32% of boys and 41% of girls count STEM careers as their dream job. And if you think the kids that age don't have their finger on the pulse of pop culture enough to understand what's cool yet, know that the number one choice for most boys was still professional athlete followed closely by superhero. But the tides, they're slowly changing, and that's because science, or what we think of as science, has become much more accessible to everybody. So now, weigh the benefits with the consequences. In the end, does it even matter how well the average person actually understands a given study? What are they gonna do with that misinformation besides spread it at parties? Meanwhile, no kid grows up wanting to be a scientist because she's interested in the protein metabolism of a nematode. No, she wants to touch a f***ing whale. She wants to be the first person to step on another planet. She wants to wash the oil from an elk's face and ride it across the sea. This little girl did. Anyway, my point is, what's wrong with a little misunderstanding if it creates a positive outlook on the importance of science in the world? Now, I know what some of you are thinking. If pop science starts to govern funding on actual science, real work will never get done unless the studies can publish the kind of miraculous results the public wants to see. To which I say, how is that any different than it's ever been? Science has always been notoriously underfunded and strong-armed into coming up with specific results based on who's supplying the money. Go look at toxicology reports from early tobacco tests or ExxonMobil's early studies of global warming. An increased interest in the sciences is only gonna drive more objective funding into the field. Bam! Those shitty science blogs are not only tolerable, but essential. I'd like to take a moment to thank this ball for getting me there. That's it for today. Please come back next time when, fingers crossed, I'll have some event in my life that will necessitate a new suit. It's unlikely. Thanks again and goodbye. <laughs> Hello and thank you for watching another episode of Lowest Common Dominator. Please always go and like and subscribe, all of those things. Also go down to the comments and let me know if there are any other ideas that you want me to cover. Things that you think are the lowest, the dregs of pop culture, and I will look at them. Is this distracting, what I'm doing right now? Is it distracting to you? Oh, I'm not gonna stop. <laughs>